my name is Quentin Carton. I'm solution consultant at ServiceNow. And in this uh, short uh, video, I want to um, go over our uh, Active Directory version 2 Spock, which is part of an uh, integration uh, hub. This is an easy way to automate a task within your on-prem Active Directory. We do have, have a Spock for Azure Active Directory. The one I'm showing in that video is for Azure on-prem, meaning you have your, you maintain your domain controller. Uh, it's not a domain managed by Microsoft Azure in the cloud. Um, so just wanted to show you how easy it is to, to use that spoke from within a workflow to automate simple tasks in Active Directory, simple or complex tasks in Active Directory. Um, there is a documentation you can read with the requirement, how to set that up. But I'm going to go over very quickly uh, the things I had to set up to, um, to get this working. So first of all, on my instance, uh, I installed a mid server. The mid server is the virtual machine or server in your environment, a Windows machine that have access, a network access to your domain controllers, because we're going to be automating tasks from in your domain, Active Directory domain. So we need that mid server. Uh, there's a ton of documentation on our website uh, on mid server, but this is something you need to set up. So I've took a virtual machine on the same network as my domain controller on which I have installed uh, on that m what we call the mid server VM. I installed the mid server agent and then I went on that instance and validated uh, it. As you can see, validated. Yes, and status is up. So it means my instance now can communicate to that uh, virtual machine to connect and do things in the in Active Directory. Important when you use those POC for Active Directory, specifically the on-prem one, the virtual machine you're going to be using, the Windows box you're going to be using for uh, that POC needs to be in the same domain as the domain you, you need to automate. Uh, otherwise, the authentication is not going to work. We use um, PowerShell underneath the, the cover, underneath our POCs. And if you are working in a m virtual machine that is not part of the domain, the authentication is just not going to work. So make sure your, um, the VM you use is part of the same domain. So I'm logged in on that uh, Windows machine, which has access to the Active Directory domain. You can see there is a service running. This is my mid-server service that I've configured. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, I've installed on that machine a console, Active Directory Administrative Center, so you can see um, when I'm doing tests for my workflow, we can just go and review those, review that uh, we're creating users and stuff like that. So, um, let's, uh, I think that's it. Let's go and see uh, from within Flow Designer. Um, last step I, I had to, um, to perform was to go in the home connection. I went through my Active Directory version 2 there and I had to configure the uh, endpoint. So basically I put the do domain name. Um, this is um, the domain, one of the domain controller I decided to use. Um, I believe you can put the domain name or an alias. This, this needs to, um, if you look up the DNS, DNS name, it needs to go through your domain controllers. It's um, credentials that we use from Flow Designer Integration Hub to go and connect um, to the domain controller. So there is in the doc all the permission that this user needs to have in your AD to perform those tasks like creating a user, deleting a user, creating a group, and so on. So this was taking, I took care of this before. Now I go back in the flow. I created the test flow, no matter the trigger, it doesn't matter. Just put a, an example of trigger for that flow. And I was just poking around, just want to show you some examples. So uh, here I'm creating a user and adding it to a group. Um, because I want to show you how to use those Spock, I'm going to add another step in my flow and we're going to have fun and, and uh, launch it, run it. Active Directory, so I'm looking for Active Directory V2. This is the one for on-prem. This one is the one for, uh, for um, on Azure, but we're, looking, we're working with local domain controller. I want the other steps. So see, there's many, many steps and underneath the cover, uh, it's a bunch of PowerShell script that we wrote. You don't have to go through through it, but uh, if you are curious, I'm going to be showing to you how you could uh, actually look at those scripts. 
So I'm looking for a step that um, verify if a group exists. Or, uh, so I'm just gonna, um, uh, does group exist? Okay, I'm gonna add this step and I'm, I'm gonna say it's my first step in the, in the flow. And I'm gonna, not gonna go over how you can put logic in the flow, but if you want it, you could verify if a group exists in ID and put some flow logic. If a group uh, not exists, then I create it. If not, I go to the next step. I just want to focus really today on, on the Spock action. So I'm going to um, put a group name that exists and we'll go check the result after. So I think in my um, user or you there, I think I have a group. I'm going to pick one of the group there. Let's see what, what group can I take in that. Uh, Actually, if I click on those users, I should see if they are member of any specific group. Let's uh, see. Uh, Built-in. Pretty sure that built-in there must be some group I can use. Actually, I'm going to put a group that I know doesn't exist. We don't need to mess with group. I'm just going to say Quentin, gr Quentin group. It should return false. Um, so that's just for the test. So you see, I just pass parameter. I don't have to worry about any authentication because we configure the endpoint with the credentials. I uh, don't have to worry about scripting. I've just passed metadata. This information can come from the trigger. I could have a trigger on that flow that says if a record in that table uh, is updated, then trigger that flow. And I could leverage the metadata from the data part here to pass the group name. Here yeah, I'm just hard coding just because it's a quick quick little test. Just for your information, if you want to see how we've built that Spock action, you can open it. You could actually make a copy so you can modify it and make your own. Um, they're all built kind of the same way. For this one, it's, um, it's we're using a PowerShell script that uh, is gonna be sitting on the mid server. Um, so you could find this way to find it. You can check in the doc. I don't recommend you modify them because they are tested and supported by ServiceNow. We maintain those, but let's say we're missing a Spock action in that um, in the in the action for Active Directory on-prem. Um, let's say here we have create user, add user to group. You could actually create your own action by going there, making a copy and go and on the mid server on, on your instance, find the PowerShell script, make, make a copy of the PowerShell script and, and modify, modify uh, whatever the script is doing to create your own building block, automation building block. Um, for the most part, I think we have all the action you would need because we created those uh, Spock action based on what we see the customers are asking. Um, but this is, a, this is an option to you. Yeah, I'm generating a password. This is a step coming from the Active Directory sp Spock. And uh, with that random password, I'm creating a user. I'm just going to change the user number there. Uh, and I'm passing the newly generated password from the previous step. And important, I'm telling that step on which organization unit I need to create that user. This is important. If you put just the name of the OU, it's not going to work. You need to use an LDAP path. And that's important. And then I'm added the user to the group. And I think this group doesn't exist, so the, it should fail. The, that step should fail, but I'm going to keep it on, pur on purpose and see what it does. So let's go ahead, save, and I'm going to click on test. And then we'll verify my Active Directory. While it's saving, we'll go there in that OU, verify that there is a new user created there. Okay, let's test it. All right, it's processing. The first time you run this, it may take a little bit of time to, to run the first um, first time the PowerShell CMD. That. So it failed and I was expecting this because the group doesn't exist. I just wanted to test. Does the group exist? You can see the value false. So I could implement some business logic, say, hey, if the, the group does not exist, then do that. Um, in my case, um, here, here we, the way it's built is completed, but it still moved to the next step. Let's refresh the flow. Um, well, that's the step to generate the password, and this is fine. 
and the create user. So the user was created, I can see it's completed. And as expected, I'm trying to add a user to a group that doesn't exist. So that's returning an error, um, but that's, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, that's, that was an expected uh, result. Now let's go to Active Directory and refresh the screen. And now you have the user for um, created in that right organization unit. So now let's see, um, I should probably create uh, add a step to create a group. We're gonna skip that step. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a group, verify if it exists, and then, um, and then add the new, new user to that group. So let's see if we have a step to create a group. Active Directory, what do we have in there? Click here. Do we have a create group? Yeah, we do. So I'm gonna call it Quentin. Uh, I'm gonna call it, how do I call it? I'm gonna put it at the beginning. Duk, duk. Group name, um, Quentin Test Group. All right, um, and I'm gonna put it in the same organization unit. So. I'm just going to say it's a global security group. Yeah. I'm not necessarily an expert on Active Directory. And I'm going to copy in the same organization unit, basically the which folder on, a, in, on which folder I'm, I'm going to create that group. Okay. And I take the name Quentin Test Group. So this is going to create the group in Active Directory. I just want to make sure you see that this step works. The next step is just to validate that the group is created. And then I want to add the user to the group I just created. So I'm going to put the right group name there. So this time everything should be green. So let's, let's keep going. I'm going to put Quentin user five. Make sure I save that. Quentin user five. Okay, let's go. So a lot of steps. This is not a specific flow for a specific use case. This is just me poking around with the Active Directory v2 spoke. So you can see it in action. Um, if you don't have the luxury to have an Active Directory or everything set up, at least you can get a feel for it. Okay, let's click. Run test. Let's see what it does. Um, so we can go back to my Active Directory in the, under test. Hopefully, if everything works okay, I should uh, see a group coming there. See? Quentin test group. And my user is going to pop up, show up in a minute. Let's go back to the flow. Still running. be done by now. Let's go back, refresh. There we go. Group user, uh, group, uh, user Quentin user 5. And if I go in the group, uh, Quentin going to be a member, of course. So see, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's a simple example, but uh, you can see with no code, like you just drag and drop a batch of action and put metadata and, um, and you're good to go. Um, so I'm going to refresh. So it should be it should be done by now. All right. So with this, um, I hope uh, this gives you a good feel for um, the Active Directory V2 spoke. Thank you.